welcome to Nigeria Queen in my program that examines issues that affect the polity, economic situation, and related sectors of the Nigerian entity. My name is Ubong Kings. Welcome. State Professor Chukumer Charles Saludo marked his second year in office on the 11th of March 2024. The success of the APCA candidate during the state gubernatorial election on November 9, 2021 was widely celebrated by his supporters. In his manifesto titled The Saludo Solution, the governor articulated his vision for the state to become the most desirable location for various social and economic activities. To foster accountability in governance, Advocacy Foundation, a youth-led CV technology organization with the motto of bringing, youth, bringing truth or back power into politics, developed a scorecard of achievements and promises made by the governor, and they called it the Soludometer, which is launched on March 17. It monitors and advocates for the fulfillment of the 100 most critical promises made by Professor Charles Solido during his campaign based on four particular sectors, which of course includes economic transformation and enablers, social agenda, governance, rule of law, and environment. And joining us in this conversation is Onye Edison, who is the project lead Solido Meter. And also to react um, to this course sheet, we are also being joined by Dr. Nelson Menuga, who is a special advisor to the Governor on Youth Empowerment Program. You're welcome. It's good to have you. Thank you. Thank you, my brother. I'm very delighted to be here and to add my voice to this discourse. Thank you. Okay, yes, let's start real quickly. Well, from a general standpoint, I want you to rate, so to speak, the performance of the Anambra State Governor in the past two years. Let's start there before I join you on here. Okay, uh, over to me, right? Yes, please. Yeah, thank you. Uh, thank you for having me. I'm very delighted to be here and to, you know, add my voice to this discourse. Uh, this is very important to us because it's, um, I mean, it's two years of hard work for Mr. Governor, for Sir Charles Oludo. You will recall that two years ago, Precisely on 17th March, he was sworn in, uh, and on that same day, he resumed work. Uh, he actually worked for eight hours, 45 minutes on that same day. Uh, the next day, he went to Buku, uh, a slump area that um, is very dear to Mr. Governor's heart. And uh, if you go to Buku two years after, uh, you will see the miracle that has happened in that um, area. Um, just to say that um, these two years has been one of um, great changes in the landscape. And uh, for me, it is um, what um, I call creative destructions and transformations happening in every sector of the economy. Every sector of the economy is quite very active. And uh, given the peculiar time we've uh, come, uh, you know, the governor was elected overwhelmingly. And um, given the inflection, the economic um, indices, uh, given the challenges on ground, given uh, the inflation, like I mentioned earlier, and uh, all those um, micro and macro issues uh, of the economy, uh, you agree with me that um, the governor has um, done exceedingly well. And I say exceedingly well because this is the view of um, not just Anambra youth, but this is also the view of um, most critical stakeholders in our state. Talk about the okay. traditional rulers. Uh, I'll, I'll talk about the president general. Yeah, I get that. Yeah, I get that. Um, probably because you are in the system, you probably would sound like that. Because um, from what we found out, according to advocacy group. Uh, there is this comprehensive report on the, about 50 campaign promises of uh, Mr. Soludo, the governor, and he was scored D, which simply means fairly, fairly poor, right? Now, 
Uh, before no, 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 no. Hold on, no. hold on, hold on, hold on. Before I come back to you, let, okay. let me get through to Onye. Onye, real quickly, from your assessment, as far as this um, report is concerned, let's talk about the criteria. What was the yardstick to come at, uh, rather, arrive at this point? Okay, so um, we actually assessed 50 of the promises that was right. made by Professor Charles Chukuma Soludo. Right in his um, manifesto, we got these promises from you know his manifesto, from going through his campaign speeches, right. right, and then we put these promises together, and then um after a comprehensive and thorough assessment, the governor has a score of eighty four percent. According, it's this this is detailed in the scorecard, you know, the methodology and everything we did to get to that point, to get to that score is all detailed detailed in the um, scorecard, right. And then this is just um, about 33.6% of, you know, the total possible scores, right? Um, that's going by the 50 promises that we actually assessed for this scorecard. Now, I'm, I'm not saying the governor has not done anything. Um, quite frankly, work has actually been going on, you know, in this state. But then our facts, the data, you know, that we have there suggests um, that the governor still has a lot, you know, to do. Okay, now, just before I came to you, I did know that Nelson was trying to say something. Nelson, you were going to react to that uh, particular uh, that particular report that says Mr. Governor and the person of uh, Solido, uh, to a large extent, scored uh, D, which is fairly poor as far as uh, the advocacy group um, uh, report was concerned. What are your thoughts on this, really? Let, let me say that... Um I mean, everybody is welcome to assess the government, and uh, I mean, this is part of the uh, the reform that is going on in the states. Now, everybody, because of the transparency and the accountability that this government is known for, and that this government has enthroned, uh, people now can come out to do their own independent assessment. But let me say, with all due respect, that um, uh, the advocacy actually missed the mark this time around. Uh, because I'm not sure if they visited Anambra and if they in Anambra. Uh, I'm talking from insider point of view, and I'm talking from the point of the, someone who is resident in Anambra who stays in Anambra. I'm not even talking from the point of view point of view of a government appointee. Uh, I'm talking from what is there at the streets. Uh, I mean, you won't tell the man at the that um, the government or the children at Tokoko that the governor has called D. He won't tell the women uh, that are receiving free health care and mental and delivery services. By the way, uh, medication inclusive CS, uh, CS uh, uh, section uh, inclusive. You won't tell them that they are um, uh, the governor's called D. You won't tell the young families out there who are beneficiaries of um, the free education that the governor has was called D. Uh, you won't tell the people who stay in Oka who are now enjoying a uh, very good road network that the governor has called D. You won't tell the youth out there who are even the highest beneficiary of what the government programs and policies uh, that we have at the moment uh, that the governor has called D. You talk about one, you two skills. Talk about um, the solutions, uh, uh, solutions sports team. Talk about um, the ASI, the social innovation uh, district that is intentionally training, that has so far trained over 20,000 youth in different district skills uh, that the governor has called it. You won't tell uh, your, your point is those of us. Your, your point yeah, is noted. There are a lot of, your point yeah. Is noted. So it's very important that um, you, you, you are armed with what the government has done within the past two years, it's very important that you come down in Oka here. You come down, you go to Oka, you go to Onita, you go to you go to Ekulobia, you go to there's no community, there's no local government in Anambra that is not receiving a fair share. Yeah. Recently yeah. Just hold on, uh, uh, hold on, Mr. Nelson, hold on, hold on, real quickly. Let's come back to you. On you, you say something, I mean, based on your report, that this is fairly poor. Now, what is the criteria? As in, like, do you have officers on ground in Oka, in the locations that you mentioned, to see this thing firsthand before this information came out? 
Okay, so we have field officers in a number of states, and then we do not just rate promises based on what we think or what we feel, right? We, we visit, you know, we have field officers in the states that visit these locations to ascertain that these promises are, you know, are actually either in the work or they've been kept. So we, we actually do our due diligence before giving ratings to promises, right? And then Mr. Nelson talked about, you know, how you need to be in a number of states, you need to come to a number of states to see what the governor is doing. But then the governor did not just make promises you know, that are physically verifiable. He didn't just make promises that you can view, you know, and understand and then score tangibly. Yes, the governor is working on roads and, you know, other key infrastructure in the state. But then there are also other promises that are detailed in this report and not things that you can actually see, you know, by going around the state. You have to visit, you know, offices. You have to check the budgets. We did all of this before we actually um, assigned the ratings that we did to those promises. But that's what I'm going to say. Okay, now let, let's look at something real quickly. Um, there's this development, something we saw on, on social media, something that was viral, so to speak, and um, it pretty much had to do with an infrastructural development somewhere where a viral video, which did show um, the governor solidly berating um, one of his commissioners with reference to poor quality of work. And um, the question really would be, does this actually show uh, the state of uh, government's commitment to great infrastructure for Indian Anambra. Just before you get to answer that question, we'll take this break. When we come back, we will continue. Please stay. You're welcome back to Nigeria, Quenu, and we've been looking at the issues on all the counter issues with reference to uh, the fact that, uh, well, we are examining uh, Solidos two years in office. Uh, I'm talking about the number of state governor. And I also still have with me um, Onye Edison, who is the project lead Solido meter. And of course, I also have Dr. Nelson Omenuga, who is the chief advice there uh, to the governor on youth empowerment program so we're just going to jump right back in and just before the break i did ask a question and we went to tilted of a sort to talk infrastructural development and the question was really a viral video popped out and pictures too also popped out on social media where we saw mr uh, the governor actually uh, berating one of his commissioners due to uh, the poor state of uh, work done on one of the roads or one of the infrastructure facilities that was happening, the governor was in charge of. Now, would you say that uh, this is a function of the state government's commitment to having great infrastructure for Indi Anambra or, or something? Let, let's, let's talk to you, um, uh, Nelson, real quickly. Um, if um, the video you meant is the one I saw, uh, I think that's um, the governor, you know, trying to draw the attention of the TC chairman of Baru. So that's not the commissioner okay. for works. That's the, the transition chairman for about local government. Um, okay. Because um, some persons had um, built up a walkway. And that is part of um, the mess that had been going on in past governments where people just build up anywhere without thinking about the future. And by the way, I want to tell us that um, this government, the activities of this government, the programs and the policies of this government are guided by the trade documents, not just the People's Manifesto, not just uh, the manifesto she talked about. They are, we are being guided by Vision 2070, which incidentally uh, the governor uh, was the chair of that particular uh, committee, the Vision 2070 committee. We are also guided by the uh, the transition document that was presented by our own dear Madam Obi Ezekwesle, and then the People's Manifesto. These are the three critical document that guide our actions, our programs, and our activities. So it is important that in assessing the government, you look at what these documents, uh, you know, said uh, that they are going to do, uh, this is what this uh, document has set out to achieve. That would be, uh, it would be very unfair for one to stay at the comfort of this place or you know and, and then start judging government based on one document you must bring okay. these three documents on, and on. then L let uh, me read something then. for you so read that's it yeah let me read something that's it like can i complete um, okay, something, please? yeah real quickly let, let me say that um the video you saw 
like I say, was the government was drawing the attention of the TC chairman to the fact that he was there and he allowed people build up area. And this speaks to the issue of um, one of the key pillars of this administration, which is uh, governance and value system. And even talking about security law and order. There must be law and order for any country to make meaningful progress. The government keeps saying that and Mr. Governor is very passionate about enthroning that law and order. You can't build without getting the necessary approvals, you, uh, without observing the building codes. And uh, this is a part of the efforts of this government to ensure that no place is left unturned. Every sector right. uh, must receive its solution touch. And the governor is very particular about our environment, and that is why he, you know, he has. Hold on, hold to your, hold on your horses. Now, there's something I need to point out very quickly. As far as this report is concerned, this report actually did mention that this particular aspect of infrastructural development was about the only one that was kept. Let me read Mr. Your the governor's um, speech. A part of it where he committed himself by way of his promise to his people to Indian Umbra that he was going to handle. He said, we will declare a state of emergency on roads. And of course, this is one aspect that was kept by, uh, by the governor. Nobody's disputing that, right? Nobody is. But here are the issues. Now there are some- There, there are so many areas, without the record, there are many areas that the governor had made promises that he actually kept. There are so many of them. He talked that about making sure that every youth has at least two or more skills. Today, Mr. Governor has not just um, provided um, training for over 5,000 youth, he had also given the, the financial capacity to, you know, start up and to, uh, you know, uh, to, to be successful. And, and it, actually, mentorship is ongoing and uh, these businesses have been nurtured. He had also supported for and, uh, 495 uh, small business businesses owned by the young people. So, uh, whoever is saying to you I that um, uh, it's only infrastructure that, that because is what where the government is giving attention, that is not the, the question is that the government is talking everywhere. Talk about security law and order. The government has done so well. You can go to Anicha, buy your stuff, and, and live on it without being harassed by the aboros. This is part of the efforts being made by the government to ensure that there is security, a law, and order. Talk about economic transformation, uh, uh, which is what these roads are doing today. Uh, somebody who is um, at um, Ebenebe, uh, which is an agro area, can now take his or her goods to a corker, which is an orca, within 15, 20 minutes and sell his or her products. That is, and these are gradually transforming our, 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 what they call it, our, our state. Talk about human capital development. Okay. I'm just okay. taking one, one, one bit. There's a whole lot of I, things I to say under security and order. There's a whole lot of things to say under economic transformation. There's a whole lot to say under human capital. There's a whole lot to say about um, uh, governance and value system and then environment. Nelson, you know, where the government is noted. Really the truth of the to matter make sure, is, uh, uh, have, yeah, you know. We have a comprehensive list here. We have 50% of promises are in the world. Can you tell me one promise made by the governor that he's doing? Sorry? Tell me the one. I didn't get that. And, uh, and uh, I will tell you what the governor has done there. Okay, I should name one of the promises. I'm, I'm very very excited to tell me one right now. One, uh, one of the promises one. that uh, the governor did, did mention which is in the works as it stands. It says, sustain timely payment of benefits for all pension senior citizens and design a sustainable safety net targeting the needs of all aged citizens above the age of 70. That's one of the promises. The, the governor, the, let me tell you, the governor has cleared the backlogs. When we came on board, Gratuities and pension have been owned. Are you aware? Go ahead. I'm the here. governor have cleared that. The governor has cleared that. That of past administration and has commenced the payment of his own. And as we speak today, he's in the last batch of um, clearing the whole this um, the whole uh, um, pensions and gratuity. So how can you say in Anambra today once you you retire, you are sure of your gratuity? 
And it is not in, it in, in the world. It's not in the world. It's not in it. That's what I'm saying. I, I, I'm talking, saying about the edged, edged, talking about the edge, edge, talking about edge people, the governor without missing words has, you know, carried the uh, old people along as we speak today. Um, uh, our elderly people in Anambra today are, are being supported by the government. We have more. Um, uh, there's no part of um, programs that these people are not being carried along. Our coconut and the uh, palm oil revolution in Anambra today were all distributed and given to them. This we are sure with the, uh, within no on a basis. All this we are giving to uh, uh, um, those elderly people. There's nothing done in Anambra as we speak, that don't have their interest at heart. Talk about our health right, our health um, insurance scheme. All these old people are beneficiary of this program. So what are you saying about Point taking care of the old people? Point the governor uh, uh, you know, is you very intentional and he's taking his time. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, let's come to you. Um, we already see this, um, this, this assessment we say it's 50 promises. We're talking about, look at about, about 50 of them. And 50% of these promises are in the works, right? 40% yes. are not yet started. 4% is do you? broken. 4% compromised. Let's get to you, Onye. What, are, what exactly, now, you just heard, um, you, you just heard Ms. Nelson now, Dr. Nelson, rather. He say that some of these are already done. But the point here is, how do we weigh the gravity, uh, sorry, the extent to which it has been done versus the extent to which it has not been done? Okay, um, so I'm just going to walk you through some of the promises, you know, and the updates are quite, quite quickly, please. Concerning, concerning them, right? But the first promise um, under economic transformation and enablers is to create the import and export, the export department of ANSIPA, right? We visited this office um, at least twice in the past year. And then, you know, this promise is written in the works, right? Works are ongoing for the department to be created, but okay. it has still not been created. So we cannot wait that promise kept because it's not been done. The governor promised to create the department. And then there's also another promise to organize special cultural law and historical festivals, you know, to attract diaspora communities to this place. Right. There's no, there's been no reports from publicly available data of any such festivals, right, or cultural, um, you know, fest festivals rather in the state. And then uh, on the issue, on the area of um, social agenda, the government promised to extend the free education initiative in addition to sustaining it, right? So for, for um, government owned schools, students from primary to GSS3, they, they are on free education, they do not pay tuition fees. But then our findings, when we visited um, the community school in Amansky and then um, Igodike Grammar School in Oka, showed that um, students from SS1 to 3 still pay tuition fees and the government promised to extend it. So this promise cannot be rated to kept because, you know, the whole is not being completed in entirety. There's also the promise um, for inclusiveness and accessibility when it comes to people living with disability, you know, in the area of education. Right. Um, this promise, you know, has also not been kept. It has not, work has not started on the promise. The government also made a promise to reactivate and improve on existing tourist site, tourist, um, site, yes, in the state to make them up to international standard. We visited, um, the Obunike cave and then, um, and then, you know, nothing, no work has actually been done. No work has actually been started in that, you know, in that regard. We also visited the museum at Umri, right? And then the governor has actually not started work in that area. And then when it comes to the enforcement of the ban, the governor actually pronounced the ban on the legal collection of tax, taxes and levies in France. But then when you visit places like Onicha, we visited at Ekoka, the market at Ekoka, and then, you know, there's, there's no problem when it comes to the people who interacted with at the markets confirmed that, you know, they're not being taxed or, or you know, act to pay levies illegally. But then when it comes to Onicha, there's reports everywhere on social media, even our findings show that, you know, this, the, the ban is yet to be wholly enforced. It's, it's not enough to just pronounce the ban. We, we, we okay, think thank you. Hard. Just hold, hold your thoughts there. Dr. Nelson, let's come to you real quickly. What are your reactions to this, especially the tax that um, tipper, dri tra tipper drivers had to pay and uh, it was said it was banned, but somehow it's still happening. Let's talk about that real quickly. The tipper driver did what? Well. Say that again, please. The ban that was uh, put on uh, taxes for uh, tipper drivers, number one. Number two, the fact that uh, 
they are being extorted, so to speak, especially at, at Onicha. Now, we just got that report now from uh, Onye right now. So tell me, what exactly is the government doing in this regard? I just told you that the effort being made so far by the government to stop uh, Abur, to stop illegal collection of taxes. You will recall that this government was very proactive uh, and as a way of cautioning the effect of um, subsidy and, uh, of course, um, meeting the needs of the poorest or the poor in the society, had given uh, tax waiver to uh, you know, for the barrel pushers, the hawkers, the the organizers, uh, you know, petit traders, and what have you. That is executive fiat still stands to today. But there are reports that it's still happening. I am, I know that it is still happening. Is part of the efforts being made by now. You can have to now, uh, you know, compare and contrast where we were and where we are today. These things are not going to disappear overnight. The government is showing spirited effort against uh, 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 illegal tax collectors. Today we have Sasa. The, that's the, the anti-tout uh, movement that is actually arrested. And so far, so many arrests and so many persecution has been made that that you see pockets of um uh, we have uh, still have um, pockets of um, people who are bent on you know disobeying the the law of the land does not mean that the land or uh, that the government is not making its trying its best to make sure that that is permanently stopped of course even in us uh, that we've claimed to be the most secure country they still have pockets of shootings here and there you will say no that um, uh, america has failed as a country no the the fair thing to do or to assess is what effort is government being made to stop that? And is there any effort being made by the governor, Professor Charles Solodo, to finally put an end to this? Yes, we might not get 100%, but at least I can tell you authoritative, authoritative because I, I, yesterday I was at Tonicha and going under the bridge, everywhere was clear. Online before, if you know, that's why I say you need to know where we were before to know and then know where we are today to be able to appreciate the milestone recorded and the progress made so far it would be very unfair and very uncharitable for one not to recognize the efforts of the uh, uh, being made and then if efforts is, is being is not being made that's a different thing altogether but you can you have seen the establishment of sasa you've seen all the time that the avg the sasa the child brigade they are all patrolling around this you know different markets different places trying to you know ensure that this menace is being put to an end i have to appreciate the government for that all right I, I, something. I, I know where i was before yeah. the coming of salute and i know where it is today and i can tell you go to my market go to oga street go to um Obogu, go to head bridge go to piwika and ask the traders there you know the current state now, of are affairs you aware, are you aware are you aware that commuters are being beaten by these towns at those locations, especially on Onitra. Are you aware? As we, I, I, can, I, I can tell you for free that's not in Anambra anymore. I can tell you that for free. Um, even if it happens, the person will be rest assured that he'll be picked up because the governor frowns seriously at that kind of um, behavior and the governor frowns seriously against uh, uh, illegal collection. Even the AIRS person, um, uh, Dr. Greg Ezilo, uh, is also putting his feet on the ground because the governor has given him that executive order to ensure that um, there is no way or window through which people can collect tax illegally. That is why efforts is being made to automate the taxation system. And as we speak today, we've achieved a substantial milestone and progress. You know, so as uh, you know, that way it discourages people from paying anybody cash. Okay. That is okay. part of the reforms going on even in no. the ARS um, sector. Thank you. So um, we have to, you know, be here in Anambra to be able to assess what is in Anambra. And we should always ensure that um, we recognize the fact that um, efforts have been made. To okay, you finally noted. To I wish we had the luxury of time. We would have played for you an audio recording to substantiate my claim. But the, not, notwithstanding, one of the issues was raised here. And that had to do with uh, uh, one of the promises by the governor. He said he was going to reactivate all inactive tourist sites. 
and work with other independent travel tours to ensure they meet the international standards for travel destinations, e.g. tourist attractions such as the Ogunda yeah, Cake. That, that is being done, my brother. Go to Ibuku Museum and see the kind of um, massive construction going on there, the construction of the place. Go to Ibuku Museum. I, I told you at this point we didn't visit Anambra. Well, Go we'll to take a break. And... Hold on to your thoughts. We'll take a break. When we come back... No, we'll come I told you that this is Anambra. Please stay. You're welcome back. I guess you're just joining in. You're the wee minutes of the program. It's Nigeria, Queen, and we have been looking at uh, the Soludo meter. Special reference to how far so far as far as the Soludo administration in two years is concerned in a number of states. And uh, I've been playing host to uh, two great persons. I've been playing host specifically uh, to uh, two persons, and uh, in, who are Dr. Nelson Omenuga, who is a special advisor. To the governor on youth empowerment program and of course on Ye edison who is a project lead saludo meter let's come back to this conversation just before the break um you were saying something uh dr nelson about uh, not the reports not being completely correct as far you have the opinion that whoever created the report did not visit uh, a number of states could you continue please uh, yes I, I can tell you that because um sorry things that they are saying here uh, are the things that we've done and or that we are still doing. I mean, Rome was not built in a day. We have to appreciate this. This and what we are assessing is two years. We are assessing two years of um, the government, and um, we should bear in mind that there are a lot of things that needs to be, you know, put on ground before we start seeing the manifesto of some of those things. That is why. Uh, we've tagged we've tagged these two years as two years of um, foundational changes, foundational transformation. Because there are a whole lot of things that you need to put on ground before you eventually see some of things. Whether we are doing all those things, the answer is absolutely yes. We are not leaving a sector behind. The governor is very intentional with his efforts in human capital development. He's also very intentional with whatever he's doing in the environment and whatever he's doing to transform the economic landscape of our state. So we should bear in mind that um, what we are assessing here is two years. The, the, the dollar rate last two years is no longer the dollar rate today. The, the cost of big domain used in construction, construction roads two years ago was far more cheaper than today. The cost of cement two years ago it's not the same with today. The cost of materials two years ago, there was a lot of changes, a lot of, um, uh, 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 if you like, um, challenges are there. But this is a government of no excuses. The governor is bent on doing what? On delivering at all costs. We understand that if Soledo built rules, it is not news. But let me tell you, my brother, what we are building is not just road. Our road are full has full road infrastructure and inf furniture. You talk about the market, they are properly marked, you talk about the pedestrian way. We, we've never seen this kind of road in Anambra, a road that is built to last for 20 years and more. Go and check all the roads done by, so they are all fully marked, they have pedestrian walkway, compared to other governments in, in the in this same states. None has pedestrian way. So what's all this building? It's an uncommon road. So when you see road, don't just neglect it, don't just don't just okay, it. Thank just... you, Nelson. Thank you, Nelson. On you, yeah, let me talk about, to you. talk about the youth that he has empowered. Hold on, hold on. Please. Five thousand youth on, never have seen this kind of thing in an hour. All this happened okay. in two years. On you, yeah, so let's just to you. Our, in our grade. Okay. I score Soludo hundred over hundred, given all these challenges and given uh, uh, what he has been able to do. Okay, and I can you, say that it's only bright. Let's continue to support, to be supportive. Some of the recommendations that the ISU saw there, that they are proposing, are something that we're already doing. They talked about okay. hotline, that the government should ensure hotline. We have for citizen engagement. We have the hotlines for different sectors, for illegal collection of revenue. You have, you know where to call. For um, any criminality, we in Anambra, there's this mantra, see something, say something. We have hotlines everywhere. 
they are here recommending that we should have hotline when we already have one there's an existing hotline here right, and there thank you so thank you that they, are in, that they came to anambra they are not in anambra this people that made this assessment yeah, thank rest. you your point is they have not no. done due diligence oh yeah quickly to you because of the want or the lack of time let's get to hear from you exactly where and how far um from your assessment from what i'm seeing here it's um it's at uh, 33.6 we also saw the recommendations you gave to the government of the day in anambra state but um i want to find out exactly how often was your or were your visits to these locations that a uh, that informed your data collection and eventually this uh, report Okay, we visited, you know, the the sites um, very often uh, um, using the Onitsha and the Otocha water scheme sites as an example. We visited there at least three times, you know, each of those locations, and uh, it was only until recently that work began at the Onitsha, the Greater Onitsha water scheme. We we're actually there last week. Um, and then we saw that work has begun. But this is one promise the governor actually made and gave a timeline for it. The governor right. said that the Onitsha and the Otota water scheme will be completed in 12 months, within 12 months in office. And then um, Dr. Nelson also mentioned that um, Governor Soludo is the chair of the Anambra Vision 2070. So yes, the governor is high, held to high standard because we believe that he has carried out, he had carried out his research before making those promises and giving timelines. Right, you cannot say you're going to complete something in 12 months and not, you know, you not carried out the research to actually know that this thing can be completed in 12 months. Yes, the governor just started, um, you know, work on that particular promise. And then one other promise the governor, um, um, actually broke is the promise to release his full agenda, costed the timelines within 30 right. days in office. That's, that's one of the promises the governor failed to fulfill. So it's, it's, it's been more than, it's been two years, right? And then he promised to release that agenda within 30 days in office. So right now, the people of Anambra State don't know how to hold him accountable or the timelines he has actually set to complete some of the work, you know, that he's actually doing in the state. I'm not saying the governor is not working. Yes, he's working. But then there are, there are issues. The, the completion of the water scheme is very, very paramount because according to the, um, sustainable development goal, um, six rather, Clean water and sanitation is actually very, very important. So the people of um, Anambra have been left to, you know, provide or produce their own water by themselves for the longest time. And I'm going to say to Dr. Nelson that what we put together is not a comparative analysis, right? It is a governor's performance assessment. We've assessed the governor's performance in the last two years in office and we put, we detailed there, you know, the work that he's done, the projects that are ongoing, the projects that have been completed, those that are compromised and all that. So I'm just going to ask Dr. Nelson to go through the scorecard and let us, you know, call us out if he thinks there are promises that we've, we've scored or rated, um, you know, wrongly, right? Because we've actually assessed 50 promises by visiting key locations, you know, where this, visiting offices, right? Going through the budgets to see if there are locations for these things before we come up with our findings. We've not just oh, manufactured. Right. We don't just manufacture data. Yeah. Thank you, Onye. Um, I think this is a good place to leave it. And quite frankly, if there is an issue with the scorecard that is being done by advocacy, like she did say, um, the government of Anambra State can call them out to iron these things out. And then that's a good place to leave it. I want to thank you, Onye Edison, for being part of the program today. You are the project lead, so you don't meet her. Thank you for your time. It's been a pleasure having you here. Thank you so much for having me. All right, and also pleasure. had with me uh, Dr. Nelson Omenduga, who is the Special Advisor to the Governor of Anambra State on Youth Empowerment Program. Thank you so much for your time. Really, I appreciate your time. It's, it's really my great pleasure. Thank you so much for having me, led my voice on this. Thank you. Thank you so much. And uh, that will be the size of the package on today's edition of uh, Nigeria Queen of. My name is Ubong King. Do well to follow this conversation on our social media platform on Facebook and Instagram at Afia TV Official. Good evening. Mm -hmm.